don't really want to head all the way down the field and all the way back the field. So what I might do is I might go back. We've got three gaps on the right now. We'll do each of those before we continue down the field again. So, again, that's done. Lift the heads, turn around, bright eyes. Oh, and if I line up in here, I think I screwed up the, cat, the math on this one. But, as you can see, it's close enough. We're not, we are over planting the edge. But the way the game plays, it's not actually using the seed where it's already been planted. The only time it does that, because this is a direct seeder, is if we change the crop in it, if I changed it to wheat, it would rip up the barley that's in the ground and replace it with wheat. But because we're planting barley on barley, it doesn't plant seeds where there are already barley seeds. So there is somewhat of an efficiency there. And now you can see it's very close to exactly the width we wanted it to be. Um, still have a very narrow strip to our left, which I'm kind of going to skip unless we absolutely have to come back for it. And rather than doing alternate rows, you can do every third row, um, if that's easier. And with this cedar, there are, there's an argument to be made that you could do every third row, but three, four and a half, so thirteen and a half. Try plotting thirteen and a half when you can only see whole numbers on your uh, on your x y coordinates in the minimap. As I said, yeah, we'll get this done, we'll get the next row done. Um, the row beyond that will be flush up against the one we just did. So uh, we'll then start doing alternate rows going down the rest of the field. it's not exact GPS will do it better and hold the line better but as you can see it's possible to do this all manually without GPS you just have to pay attention to how you're doing things and what you're doing things um, and again the easiest way to do this is at the 90 degree point, so 0, 90, 180, 270. Um, if you try and do it at 60 degrees, not so easy. So for example, we do have a bit of an angle there. Uh, doing the math on the fly to figure out how wide each row needs to be, not as easy. So we'll turn this around here. Line up there. Drop the cedar is dropped, so let's go. And drive it about 270-ish. 270.9 is a little bit too much to the right. 67 is way too much to the left. And you know you you can end up constantly fighting that. Um, I did find um, Farm Sim 17, there was a mod that put that compass angle top middle of the screen so I could actually look at the vehicle I'm driving and just glance up and it was absolutely obvious the course I was driving. Um, with Farm Sim 19 that mod didn't make it across and 22 also not so uh, you have to go hunting on the minimap and 
that can be a problem and I didn't spot what angle I was driving. So 90, I'm going to assume 95, so we'll go 104. 104 at 90 degrees. 89, 90. And even dry, and it depends how big the field is. This field probably isn't too big for the um, the error of 0.5 degrees to actually factor it too much into the calculations. But if you're doing a huge field and you're not driving precisely at 90 degrees, um, you're going to end up with a gap. So with a four and a half meter wide cedar, you might only be doing plus four per row or plus eight per row. So 105 uh, plus 9 is 114. 115, 114, 270 degrees. Oh, and 68, no. 269.7, lower the thing and. So now I'm not too worried about going down the field because we'll come back. We've got those two and the gap in the hedge is right there. So I'm actually, you know, by the time we finish this, we should be very close to exiting the exit on the field. And we can see that the cedar has passed 70%, so it is getting significant amount of wear and tear here. Significantly more than the tractor, I think, which I think the tractor started with a lower maintenance level. Uh, 114, 123, I think, is our next mark. Maybe 125, 124. Mm, I don't know. Let's let's drive this course. And there you go. 90.5. Go. So yeah, it's I don't know. I think the tractor is is the and as I that that goes to my contention that the tractor does take less damage no doesn't take any damage from rocks that a you know an implement that is lowered into the ground takes so by the time the tractor gets down to 70 percent the cedar should be significantly lower than 65 i would guess Travelling 124, so next row is 133. Because the cedar tips as you turn, so 133 at 270. There you go. We are very close to uh, contract complete, I think. What are we at? 86, so 14% more. Not too shabby. So that tractor just stepped down to 71%. Thirty-three. So one forty-two is the next path. 
43, 2, and 90 degrees. So we actually made it to 141, which is a little bit more than I wanted, but close enough go. One forty two, one fifty one is the next row, and then yeah, once you've actually plotted the uh, the rows, you can then fill in the gaps, and it's no math involved. And Heelrath, welcome to the stream. I'm liking Maypole. Um, a little bit of an explanation on this series. I hold over switching my Saturday stream to the next version of Farming Simulator until I find a map that I feel I can play for a time. So Maypole is a good map. It's got a lot of fields. Um, they're not, there's some big ones, some small ones, not overly costly. So it's easy, fairly easy to expand the farm. Um, if you get into animals, all of the animal sheds will take a thousand animals each. But there's no room for more um, more um, husbandries. So you would have to demolish the cow shed on your farm, your starting farm, if you wanted a pig shed or yeah, that type of thing. Um, I'm just playing the animals as they exist. I'm also playing with a couple of additional mods like Maze Plus and um, ugh, Precision Farming. Now Maze Plus completely changes how the animals work. They eat more, they produce more. So while my sheds can support a thousand cows, I probably can't cope with feeding a thousand cows because they eat ten times as much. But um, it's it's a good map. There's a lot to do, so it's keeping it, it's something long term can keep me occupied. Um, a lot of maps, you know, you've got twenty fields. It's like, yeah, once I've bought all 20 fields, we've kind of won the map, and I have to look for somewhere else to go. This series is intended to run until the next version of Farming Simulator comes out. And even then, we wait typically about four months before we move to the new version of Farming Simulator, because I need to find a mod map that I feel will keep me occupied. So the first series was Farming Simulator 17. I played on Lawfolds and we ran that for over 500 hours. Um, Farming Simulator 19 we went with Oakfield Farm and our goal there was to uh, have 1500 sheep which we had many a time. We were actually selling sheep in order to keep the breeding levels going. Uh, this map we're doing cows, because I decided it's the cow's turn. But I don't stream any other series, so this is this is the one and only. I used, I used to, but... Um, Family circumstances changed a little, so uh, I don't have my weekday evenings free. But we do run this for, we've been going for about four hours today, I think. We'll probably look that up now. Keep going, tractor. Go. 93% um, done. Uh, really haven't looked. We are already up to 392 hours on this. And almost four hours today so yeah like I said long-term thing if I didn't like the map we'd probably have given up playing it now it has issues um, if you can work your way around the issues that's not a bad thing one of the one of the issues that's kind of getting to me right now is the, f the hedges on this map are the hedges that Alien Jim installed on one of his maps in Farming Simulator 17, I think, which is basically 
the hedges have posts in them and if you chainsaw the post the hedge will disappear now when it was originally implemented the hedge the 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 hedge posts didn't have an impact so workers didn't have a problem driving close to the hedges because the hedges were invisible to a worker now cavalier roy did find a problem with that when doing this map there are so many hedges that if you go around and chop the the post the post will fall through the map and become debris underneath the map and causes graphics slow down so he made the posts um, have a hitbox so that interferes with the way workers do things the worker will see the post and just get all flustered so um, to get around that right now I'm in the process of knocking down all the hedges around all of the farms that I own and at least removing the map uh, sorry removing the hedge on the primary line so you see I'm planting this field this way I would remove the hedge behind me and the hedge directly in front of me and replace it with a normal in-game hedge because otherwise what workers do is they'll just come up to here and go doink oh I'm stuck and then go away and so you have to turn them around reset their implements and fix it all so in-game hedges are invisible to workers workers can drive through them if they want to or they can reverse back onto the field and turn around it's less hassle <coughs> and it may be less graphically um, impactful as well I don't know oh no tractors down to 70% yeah okay um, so I want to claim payment pay me pay me 6,441 nice and then we have that's a bigger field isn't it mm. uh, Rackham's only 1870 it is wheat so we will need to cycle the, the cedar uh, we will need to go back and get some seeds Uh, also, um, the other thing we did, we started start from scratch, so we picked our own yard. Um, I'm not playing the normal. Um, oh, what is it? Novice farm or whatever it is, um, starting farm. And we have expanded. We own two yards now, which also good thing. allows me to keep the equipment it's it's a little easier I, this 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 farm is arable there are no animal sheds on it so whoops wrong button that button um, so I can drive around this for you you know here we're just doing arable stuff so I've got my cedars my uh, rollers mulchers all of that at this farm the other farm is the cow farm and the cow farm has um, all of my grass equipment just because it's um, it's easier to keep all that stuff there Ooh. so looking around this farm we've got a sprayer we've got planter which I haven't used yet we got two carts we've got the mulcher we've got the roller we've got normally we've got the spreader as well but that's out at the moment and then we've got the the harvester and I usually keep the bigger tractors at this yard just because they're the ones that do a lot of the heavy lifting the other yard which we're now going to because the tractor and the cedar need to be fixed Um, is where I keep the, this Massey Ferguson and all the stuff to do with animals and since we only have cows it can support pigs I, I haven't got anything in the pig barn yet but, 
but uh, yeah, down here we have uh, grass bales waiting to be wrapped. I keep my wrap bales in there. I've got all the front loader tools. I've got the bale shredder, a uh, little thing. I've got a manure spreader because the manure obviously comes from here. Um, actually, how's the diesel situation? I should refuel this thing as well. Okay. There we go. So, we'll fix that. We will fix that. And that's still attached. Good. Back out of there. I will hopefully fill up with these. And my one maintenance workshop. I, I knocked down a couple of sheds on this yard. So my one maintenance workshop is here. And Fueling good. Okay, where, where are we going next? Field three, I think that's down here. That's, oh, that's that road there. So the entrance is right there. Goody, goody. stuff all the things uh, John Deere was abandoned down here because we might be using it later so I've got my mowing kit here which hasn't been cleaned or put away yet the manure wagon the bale collector the other bale collector a baler a windrower a flat cart I haven't used in ages the tedder the slurry spreader and over here I have the baler wrapper for when I'm not when I'm doing contracts I use that one it's just easier for our own yard we're, we're making 150 180 centimeter bales and using the uh, Addison to wrap the ones that we need wrapped uh, extractor um, Otherwise, if I'm doing contracts, it's just easier to head out with two tractors, one with the mowing kit, one with the, the Pottinger baler wrapper, and we will produce 150 centimeter bales for sale or for delivery on the contract. Um, grass contracts are... produce more grass than they should, I think. And um, otherwise, at least in hard mode, I'm not getting paid much to do a uh, uh, harvesting contract or much of anything really. Oh, this is going to be a little bit tight. Uh, lamp posts have no hitbox, so we can actually clip the lamp posts. Not a problem. Um, and you know. It really depends what you're doing. Our farm is very well placed for the dairy and not well placed for the other productions. But I started, I did a start from scratch, and really it's a case of picking the right. Yeah, you know, where, where you want to be based. We're, we're kind of okay for the oil mill the grain mill we have to come all the way down here to get to uh, the best sell point which is the um, maypole exports is the farthest you can get from our farm so it's a very long drive so have a high speed truck to do it with rather than hauling it with a 26 mile an hour tractor But that's not always an issue, depends really on where you select to have your starting farm. And there are farms all over this map. Um, if we pull up the map. So our cow farm, that's our cow field, that's a pig area, that's an arable field, that's the grain mill. That's a store that doesn't give you an environmental bonus. Uh, the dairy is here. 
um, there's a farm here which gives you good access to the grape processing and the spinnery and the sawmill and the animal dealer and that's the uh, grain mill there's another yard here which is good for some of the above plus you've got the bakery over there and um, the the main what I call the main sell point the BGA is here so that's not too far but that there is better for bakery that that there's another yard there that's the normal starting yard when you're playing uh, when you play easy mode whatever that is I can't remember starting starting farmer new farmer that's the starting area um, uh, there is a placeables area there so I could buy that and make use of it that's kind of useful um, but yeah to you've got to haul your your flour all the way down here to turn into bread but then you can sell it there which is quite efficient There's a couple more sell points there the stores here so I got a fair trek down to the store but it's not too bad anyway let's get back to uh, doing work and getting paid because that's why we're here and we are planting wheat in a cloud of dust but I it, it's it's a well placed like you know it's a well designed map I think you've got um, you know, you've got cell points distributed all over the map. You've got productions distributed all over the map. So you can pick and choose your starting location, which is going to make some crops easier to um, uh, easier to do because of the distances you have to travel with them as opposed to other crops. So I, I could do a canola sunflower farm and take advantage of the fact that the oil mill is just down the street. Um, I'm not, I don't own the oil mill, so I'm not actually doing that. Um, I decided to go wheat bread or flour bread. So I'm a little bit separated from the flour mill and the uh, bakery. But I do have a high-speed vehicle that can transport that stuff quickly. So it's it's not a terrible thing. If I was doing it with this tractor, I would get fed up transporting flour or transporting grains to the flour mill and then transporting flour to the uh, bakery. Because this is not a fast tractor. as I said picking other yards to do it with yeah suddenly makes that those crops easier than the start position I picked uh, part of the reason I picked the section I picked is because it has two of the largest grass fields actually I think it was three but I turned one of them into an arable field um, there's a lot of grass on this map and you don't need all of it. At least I don't think you need all of it. Your mileage may vary. Um, but I've kept one as a contract field because it pays really good money. And I've kept the other one as my field because my cows are ravenous. So I just need lots and lots of grass to feed the cows with.